Chair. Grant Robertson. Thank you very much, Mr Chair, for the opportunity to contribute in part four of this bill. Uh, it is worth noting that this is a critical element in terms of the overall scope of this bill about how uh, we improve the affordability uh, of housing for New Zealanders. I want to take people back to the origins of the Brightline test, which has been extended in part four of the bill. Uh, in front of us today. And it takes us back to Budget 2015. And in the build up to Budget 2015, New Zealanders' concerns about the housing market, about the affordability of housing, were rising. Uh, it was a time that price rises that had never been seen before in Auckland were starting to get into the consciousness of New Zealanders. And the government was flat footed. Because what we came to discover was that there was actually nothing in the budget on housing. They actually didn't have anything in the preparation for the budget that had taken place to deal with this emerging housing crisis, with 20, 25 per cent annual increases in the prices of houses in Auckland. We know this, Mr Chair, because once all the documentation from Budget 2015 was released, there was nothing in it about the Bright Line test. Officials hadn't actually done any modelling. Just reflect on that for a minute. The government introduced under urgency and around the time of Budget 2015 this Bright Line test, but never modelled what it was actually going to do. In fact, it got to a completely farcical point, which some people might rec recall, uh, Mr Chair, where Bill English admitted on television that he had no idea whether this Bright Line test would have any impact at all. Now, eventually some work was done, well, actually it had been done earlier in 2010, and it was eventually released, and it said that this two, the two-year Brightline test that the government brought in would net at most 1,000 of nearly 80,000 house sales and raise just $18 million per year revenue for the government. It was a weak and half-hearted measure. Uh, it came in because the government had had its hand forced because they kept saying there's this thing called the intention test. The intention test that if you purchase a property and then you, you purchase it with the intention of sale, you will have to pay a tax on the capital gain. Well, of course, no one admitted that. No one said, yes, that's my intention, despite the fact that thousands of homes were being flipped over quickly for profit. So the government in a corner said, all right, we'll do a two-year bright line test. I sat on the select committee, Mr Chair, where we addressed the issues in, uh, that are contained in, in this part and, and relate to the Brightline test, and Treasury were very clear. They said, if a government is going to do this, at least make it five years, because the behavioural uh, um, impacts will be much higher if you say to somebody, if you try and sell a house, an investment property, within five years, you will actually uh, be taxed on that. The advice that we got from officials was that two years wasn't enough. That, that someone who was speculating in the housing market would wait out the two years, two years in one day, and then they'd flip the property off. And that was the advice that we got in the committee. I do want to be absolutely clear, Mr. Mr. Chair, the existing Brightline test and indeed what is contained in part four apply, does not apply to the family home. It does not apply to the family home. This is only about speculators, those that own more than one property, and them moving them on within the two-year uh, period as it is now and the five-year period that we would want it to be. And, Mr Chair, this is a vitally important measure around housing affordability. Speculators have a disproportionate impact in the housing market. They are pushing out first-home buyers from getting in and building up the Kiwi dream that we know has been so important to New Zealanders. Okay. And the government got that. It got that to the extent that so it needed to be it? seen to be doing something. And as with all of the government's initiatives in housing, this is about how little they could do to get away with being seen to do something. So they rushed this out in May 2015 and said, this is what we're going to do. It was an inadequate response then at a time when the level of investor activity, particularly in the Auckland housing market, was actually lower than it is now. So now we know that nearly one in two purchases in the Auckland housing market are being made by investors or speculators. When this came in, it was just under 40%. So the government has put this in place. It's been an inadequate measure. It is a step forward 
in terms of cracking down on speculators. There are more things to be done. But this is an opportunity, and I want to make clear, Mr Chair, that we're deadly serious on this side of the House about these amendments we're putting forward. These are the policies we think that are needed to get more affordable housing, and we want to have a debate about it because the government has had its head in the sand for too long about the importance of these issues. Jacinda Ardern. 